Um, I thought the tweet was, a, I thought it was a fake tweet. And I, I was, I mean, I don't retweet these things anyhow, but I thought it was a fake tweet. It was basically, basically describing Rittenhouse as a murderous white nationalist without, without mincing words. Um, and we heard yesterday or today that uh, his attorneys, I, I think it's, is it Pierce or is it uh, Ellen Wood? Um, who said they're going to sue for defamation now? Uh, I mean, I think, well, someone who's associated with Lynn Wood talked about it at first. And then I guess uh, it wouldn't surprise me, though. I don't know who they're going to sue precisely. Uh, but my view was, I'll get to the legal capability to actually win such a suit. But my view was, uh, if I were representing Rittenhouse, I would sue Chris Wallace, first and foremost. And then secondly, sue Joe Biden. Because Chris Wallace used his debate platform to clearly, by innuendo, say that uh, that that Rittenhouse was involved in racist violence in Kenosha. Now, there's hurdles to overcome without question because he didn't use Rittenhouse's name. Uh, but it was clear by the but you could at least argue that a lot of people inferred from Chris Wallace's statement that Rittenhouse was involved in white supremacist militia uh, violence in Kenosha. Uh, and the uh, so I and, and the reason if for folks out there, there's sometimes you sue even when you know you're up against it legally. Sometimes you do so because you want to make new law. Sometimes you do so because you want to get public attention to the legal issue so that you can get legislative change to occur. I did that in the case of uh, suing the Senator Warren and Congresswoman Hallen, wanting to achieve one of the two. Uh, and, and the third time you sue is just to send a message. When I was representing Alex Jones, we sued a couple of people and threatened to sue a bunch of other people to back them off of a lie that they were spreading about Jones. The media did. The media quickly quieted up and quelled their their noise. When I went public saying I was going to sue a bunch of people in the Covington case, 90 percent of the big names all backed off, uh, retracted and didn't repeat it. So part, part of the reason would be to to get ahead of that narrative and put pressure on the other side, even if you don't think you'll survive a motion to dismiss. Uh, I think he can sue in places that does not have an anti-slap statute so that they don't have a risk of fees coming back the other way. But I would start off with Chris Wallace because it was really outrageous what Wallace did. I mean, Wallace was spreading fake news the entire debate. Uh, it, it was one hoax after the next hoax. After, it's like it, there's plenty well, of places you can go at Trump without doing, going into hoax world. The, but but he went see, into every single hoax he possibly could. He disgraced himself on a national stage. And I would sue him because he's a disgrace of a journalist. He's what his dad was at the end when his dad was selling out for big tobacco for everybody who doesn't remember. They they buried his, an insider story because Mike Wallace who, by the way, grew up uh, selling tobacco on late night uh, interview shows, um, the uh, sold out, and pimped himself out for big tobacco. And his kid is a he, kid is a chip off the old block, only in the corruption side, not the IQ side. So I would I would just be brutal in going after him for that reason alone. Um, the going after Biden campaign is going to be a much bigger reach than I, in my view and other for other reasons, even though he shows Rittenhouse's image. Hold, hold uh, on a second, guys. Bart, Robert, I think some people are saying the feed died. Did the feed die? I think uh, I'm going to see what that what happens here. Feed is still good. Okay, now uh, people are still seeing it. Sorry. Um, yeah, feed is good. Feed is good. Feed is good. Uh, but Robert, so bringing it back one step. So I hadn't thought about the Chris Wallace angle. I, I and just as a general thing, I'm I'm more inclined to forgive Chris Wallace because I think as the moderator, he, he's not there to be the real time fact checker. And I think it's easy to blast him. But setting that aside, we'll get to the suing Chris Wallace and what that would entail. My understanding is they said they're going to sue Biden and the Biden campaign. Sovereign immunity, we've seen in Elizabeth Warren. Presumably, it's the exact same argument as with the Covington Catholic kids, the exact same rationale, tweeting about a you know current event, et cetera. Would, that, would the sovereign immunity, am I stupid for even asking, it would not apply to the campaign itself? It wouldn't apply to Biden either. He's not, he's not an elected office holder. So they wouldn't have any they wouldn't have that immunity at all. Uh, the reason I'm focusing on Chris Wallace out of the gate is because it'd be one thing if Chris Wallace failed to fact check Biden doing that. But that isn't what he did. He introduced this. He interjected it. He created it. He the, I was wondering where he was going when he started talking about violence. And then when he said violence, white supremacist violence in Kenosha, it was like there was no white supremacist violence in Kenosha unless you're accusing Rittenhouse. Uh, by the way, he shot other white people. OK, I mean, I mean, it, it, all of it's absurd. It was a, a to to slander a 17 year old kid facing life in prison in a high profile trial shows what a bottom gutter level bum Chris Wallace is. 
So that's why I would sue him. Um, the Biden doing something political, not a real shocker, frankly. Uh, he put Rittenhouse's image on there, but he doesn't even he it's more innuendo. In other words, it's not even as direct as what Wallace said. Wallace says white supremacist violence in Kenosha. Do you condemn it? That can only refer, frankly, to one person. So you'd be arguing about whether or not it was a, a of and concerning him. But if we use the Alex Jones standards, the liberals want, by golly, he can be sued. Um, and the if uh, uh, because they have a very broad definition of of and concerning, but even a more limited definition, there's a fair argument that millions of Americans interpreted that statement as referring to him. Clearly, Joe Biden thought that's, so. That's why he showed the photo the next day. But, but, but Robert, I, I have to admit, though, that's a really, really I'm talking about you're, you're stretching it to the to, to as far as the defamation. I think the edges of defamation can go, because obviously oh, with, 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 without you're asking, you're going to be asking and it's a, the pick of a judge, either a liberal judge or conservative judge to infer that he was talking about this one individual, even though he's, he's made. And I, and I agree. You're right. Kenosha. You, he could he could have only been in my mind talking about Kyle, but I don't know if that's enough to, to actually you yeah, know be yeah. able to recover off that. You know what I mean? I, I oh, understand yeah, your point about the about legal, swing, but no question that's the very big legal hurdle that you're not likely to get past. Same problem with the Biden campaign. Even though they show the photo of him, they don't specifically say white supremacist him. They use that right before they yeah, show the yeah. photo of him. So it's going to be tougher. It's actually tougher to show. Uh, it's easier at one level. They have a photo of him. It's harder at another level. They're less specific about what they're using the photo for. Um, so in both cases, the oven concerning part for people who don't know, it's called colloquium collo uh, colloquially, uh, which is that basically you have to show that the statement was about you. Now, I would note in the Alex Jones cases, they said, no, that no longer applied. If it if someone could infer it was about them, or if you could further do Google research and discover it might be about them, that was the standard the Texas Court of Appeals applied, the standard that's never been applied in the history of defamation law. Now, I disagree with that standard, but if, if that's going to be the new standard, well, let's apply it to everybody then. Um, it's what I've told some of my institutional friends in the media who hate Alex Jones, say, if the Alex Jones standards applies to you, you're all getting sued tomorrow. Good luck with that. Um, but um, yes. Nate is right. The other concerning part would make it very hard to get past a motion to dismiss to sue either, either party. And so let's assume, or let's just take for granted you get past that point. Taking Corliss Drinkard's uh, super chat here, if Rittenhouse is, if he's ultimately convicted of murder, uh, wouldn't that moot the, the issue of defamation since defamation suit could drag on for years? I say, if he's found guilty of the act, could that moot the defamatory aspect of what was said? No, because he well, said, but, they said the motivation was white supremacist violence. That's the difference. If he had just said he was a murderer, that's one thing. But to say the murder is hard to sue because of the prosecution, because there is probable cause, they can always cite that. But the, the, it was the white supremacist motivation part. Now, a second aspect of this, by the way, for everybody out there, it's almost impossible to sue for calling someone a racist or white supremacist or white nationalist. It's why the media does it. Um, I challenged that in the Cassandra Fairbanks case. And while they dismissed it on actual malice grounds because the Trump judge decided to look up facts from the Internet, because apparently that was a reliable source for him. That's another story. The but putting that aside, the uh, the he did acknowledge that the I was able to get him go a little further and say that certain kinds of white supremacist references could, in fact, be defamatory. Uh, my view is we have hate crimes these days. We have racial discrimination laws on the books. People decide people's motivations, as a matter of fact, all the time. Um, and so that there's some line there between a, uh, just a, an opinion that's so vague, it's not really a factual determination and a factual determination. Um, the question is whether you get past a motion to dismiss. I'll tell you, 90 percent chance you don't. So you have to get past of and concerning. And then you have to say that white supremacist or white nationalist or any language like that is a statement of fact subject to verification rather than a subject of statement of opinion that's too vague to be determined. The famous case William F. Buckley sued many years ago, went up in New York. They said calling him a racist, anti-Semitic, all the rest was not actionable. So it's very hard to sue for that. Uh, now, of course, Lynn Wood is not predicting he's going to bankrupt everybody, but, you know, that's Lynn Wood. But, but, yeah, I, 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 was, no, I was about to say, if Kyle is convicted, the, the one thing about defamation, especially here in New York, is about if, if you're convicted of murder or you're some type of, you know, advent criminal and someone defames you, right, there's, there's, there's nothing you can recover from because, you know, you have no, repu no, no reputation 
to protect. So, you know, so that's one of the issues here with defamation is that if you just have such a horrible reputation, then I can almost say anything about you because it's not going to harm your reputation because that's that's the, the piece of it. So I, I think in Rittenhouse case, if he is convicted, which I don't think any sane jury or I don't believe he should be convicted at all. I think that was self-defense. If you just look at the facts as they are, I think the media is trying to make him look look like some type of left wing mass murderer out there, which that was that's not what happened. Only you have to do if, if for those of you who don't know what happened, just go look at, you know, uh, an actual news report of what actually happened. And then you can see this kid wasn't out there shooting protesters at mass. That's not what happened. But if he is convicted of murder, I think it would be extremely hard for, for him to recover a defamation suit because, you know, what reputation does he have to maintain? What damages are we going to get? Unless you're talking about maybe defamation per se, which then you don't have to worry about the damages piece, right? But if you're talking about calling him a white supremacist, you got the opinion piece and he has no reputation to maintain. Well, so and, and, it's just, I don't think there's a recovery there for him. Also, the the legal qualification, you know, killing someone, there's there could be a legal justification versus murder. I think it would be with homicide. There would be no, you know, yes. legal justification is in the term. So if he did, in fact, kill someone, it's different than being a murderer if it's found to be in self-defense versus an actual murder. But now, this this actually brings us to the major question. Someone was pointing out in the chat that I'm an idiot because Joe Biden does not benefit from sovereign immunity, nor would the campaign. Um, I don't know. I, I, I was just taken for granted he would. Um can you sue for damages? Uh, I don't know, some sort of uh, violation of your ability now or tainting the jury pool. I mean, putting out a tweet like that, I mean, effectively makes it, if not vir impossible, virtually impossible, one would think, to get a fair That's trial right. now that you have That's the right. vice president and potential you know, presidential candidate tweeting a fact that is going to taint everything. That's probably a net plus for him because now he'll get more real meaningful jury selection, which is the hard part in a trial like this. So he, he can cite to that very effectively, he can cite to Chris Wallace and cite to Joe Biden as a, as why he needs extensive, expansive, probing, voy, uh, what they would voy dire, the Latin phrase. To speak voir dire, yes. Ah, voir dire, yes. You're much better at it than me. <laughs> if you, no, but if you're in Texas, they say voir dire. Like, like it seems <laughs> so weird in Texas. I don't know why. I well, don't I mean, uh, don't uh, get me uh, in, in, in Georgia, uh, Lafayette is the Fayette. You know, so it's it's all a little bit different, uh, depending on where you are. The town of Whitwell, Whitwell is Wool, uh, so the it's all where you're from. But so I think that wouldn't necessarily be damages of a certain kind. So what Nate's talking about is that the there's certain you get to a certain place that your character is considered so bad that you could never prove special damages as a matter of law. Uh, you could call it the Lenny Dykstra rule. My old my my former client that was just found against Lenny that he had damaged his reputation so bad that he can't sue for defamation. Um, generally, though, it usually has to be real extreme and can be a jury question, depending on the nature of the facts. But yeah, that, that's a third problem for him is the nature of the case. But the real reason to sue here is to, to is to stop the media from lying about the kid. That's the real reason to sue. You're not likely going to get past a motion to dismiss, uh, avoid an anti-slap jurisdiction so you don't have oh, a bunch of fees. Um, you're not likely to get uh, damages. Uh, it would likely be stayed pending the criminal case anyway. You don't want to necessarily want him testifying under oath about his reputation and have free scale of discovery. Your goal wouldn't be to win a big, a big verdict. Your goal would be stop lying, everybody. Um, it was the reason that I made the very aggressive statements uh, for the Covington kids right out of the gate was, you know, if everybody retracts in 48 hours, da, da, da. Uh, the reason to do that was just to get everybody to stop lying and then to ideally get some degree of correction on the record. We were able to achieve both because your average person doesn't know how to assess a lawsuit. Even Biden and other people won't necessarily know how to assess a lawsuit. They'll reconsider what they're doing. Uh, and even on the Democratic side, there's other targets they can go after than a 17 year old kid they don't understand. Um, so I get they like the visual of him with a gun. They think that has all these dark uh, uh, intonations, the scary, frightening impressions. Uh, it's like the Willie Horton of the left uh, is kind of impression there. You know, the militia is coming. Uh, it's why they like the Proud Boy visual imagery. Though the Proud Boys, by the way, were founded by a Hispanic and have African American members and interest. The, the, the leader, the leaders, uh, a, a cube of Cuban descent. I think he's Cuban of Cuban descent. I mean, it's this, these are discussions you have with with people where they don't. They, I 
People deny that Trump knows who the Proud Boys are. I think 90% of the people don't know who the Proud Boys are in the sense that you may not like them and they may they may have issues, but some accusations are more accurate or less accurate than others. But oh, you yeah, know what? It's that, a that, total that, smear on the Proud Boys, by the way. It's a total smear. But can they sue? No, because there's too many of them in, in America if you have four, more than 50 people who are defamed. Uh, that's why I say the magic thing. If you want to lie about people, make sure you lie about at least 50 of them. The aggregate group. <laughs> then, then when, when, when me and Viva first met, that's what we talked about. You can't defame it, the aggregate group. It's always about the individual. But one thing, one thing though, is that I will say this. The media has helped the Proud Boys the most. Because I yeah, didn't yeah. know who they were. Well, the and biggest promotion like, of ever. Yeah, I and mean, now I'm listening to him in the presidential debate. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say with, with Trump, you know, the, you know, Trump's reaction, he's dealt with this. Wallace, uh, here's my other problem with Wallace. He asked that exact same question in the March 2016 Republican primary debates. So he knows what the answer is. It was a dishonest, misrepresentative question. And he decided to smear a kid in the middle of it, smear the Proud Boys in the middle of it. No, he can, knows he can mostly get away with it. That's why I'd be for suing him. And I'd be for documenting everything bad about him and his entire history. And I'd put it in a lawsuit so that everybody else could report on it with immunity. Because when you report on a lawsuit, you're immune, uh, folks. That's one of the reasons why some people file lawsuits is to get certain facts in the public record. I'm not saying I did that years ago against Haim Saban, but it sure was unfortunate the things they ended up reporting about that poor guy. No, so, Robert, no. I know. I mean, it was just, hey, I, I had to raise it in court, and they repeated it. You know, it turns out there were some serious accusations about well, that. 